Hey everyone, I am at the Cash. No, it's not the Cash App Conference. No, it's not. Don't get that right. Wrong. Don't get that wrong. <laughs> we'll get right back to the rest of the video in just a second. But did you know Worlds is coming up? And why not, ahead of Worlds, enter a new world with Boot.dev, the sponsor of this video? With Boot.dev, you can learn back end web development from start to finish in the Python and Go programming languages. And I know that might sound not super fun, but Boot.dev makes it fun by turning it into a game. That's right, it's an RPG game that is self-paced and captivating, and that is why it ends up being the best way to learn programming because you never get bored. The platform is designed to get you writing a ton of codes because getting your hands on the keyboard and shipping projects is the only way to really learn. And if you're ever struggling to understand a concept, Boots, a powerful bear wizard that's been trained on each lesson, can walk you through your issues. The creators of Boot.dev never want a student feeling like they spent money on something that isn't helping them, so they offer a 30-day no questions asked refund policy. At Boot.dev, they believe that learning to code is not a get-rich-quick scheme, and going deep into the materials and taking time on the fundamentals so that you are as prepared as you can be for your job search. One of the things I love about Boot.dev is they understand that not everyone has the money to spend on a membership, and so all their content is free to read and watch in guest mode. But the paid membership unlocks interactivity and the game that goes along it. Click the link in the description and use my code to get 25% off your first month or even your first year if you decide to sign up for the annual plan. Hey everyone, I'm at the 100 Thieves compound right now. I'm joined by Golden Glue to talk a little bit about 100 Thieves as they head off to Worlds in just a short time. How long until you guys head to Worlds? We leave in like 36 hours. 36 hours? Oh my yeah, gosh, okay. Very, well, very soon. We'll get through this interview quickly then. Uh, all right, so first off, I uh, just want to talk about, you know, congratulations on making it to Worlds with this team. I think a lot of folks were skeptical that this was going to happen, especially given how much the split seemed to be dominated by three different teams. Uh, so I, were you ever skeptical at any point in time that you guys would be able to make it to Worlds? Um, yeah, definitely first off, thank you for uh, the congratulations. Definitely very happy we made Worlds. Um, definitely I was skeptical at some points. You know, like a month ago, we almost didn't even make playoffs. Um, I think... We definitely had the like the lower bracket, the lower bracket like playoffs run where you get buffed up the more games you play in playoffs, you get more time on stage, and I think our form was a lot better. If you look at where we're in the middle of the split uh, in summer, we were pretty trash, and I think we did a good job like constantly grinding and improving. Obviously, we had Tomo come in too, and that was a big change for us at the end of the split. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely surprised if you like if we rewind and we just look at the results of both splits. I'm definitely surprised where we landed, and I think we did play really well in playoffs for C9, and I do feel like you know the boys earned the spot, and I'm happy that we're going. Yeah. What was the attitude going into the match against Cloud9? Because obviously they were in the lower bracket alongside you all, but I think uh, so. Like it, it was, I think maybe one of the biggest upsets we've seen this year so far by most people's metrics. So what was kind of the mentality as you guys went into it, and especially afterwards as well? I mean, going into the CI match, we knew we were the underdog, which I always feel like is a pretty big competitive advantage. The other team has a lot more pressure on them. Mm -hmm. Everyone's expecting us to lose. Um, and I think internally, like, I think we all knew we had a good shot. Like, I think the community obviously didn't think that. <laughs> but, uh, like, internally, like, we knew it was going to be a tough match. We thought it was going to be a tough match, honestly. We thought it probably was going to be tougher than what it actually was. Um, but we were definitely like confident that we could beat them if we played well. Yeah. Taking a step back from the qualification to Worlds, what has it been like for you working with this lineup guy of guys? Because I think you know, some people can see how these players interact in content, or maybe you get like the, the sound up or whatever from the games where Riot releases a clip of them all talking or something. But what is it like for you behind the scenes working with all these guys? I overall, like, it's really been a pleasure. I feel like the guys have had a really good mindset going into like each game. You know, they kind of know that we are a developmental roster. I feel like we don't get too down when we lost. When we get when we win, obviously, like we get to celebrate really well. I think the the press conference we did after the FlyQuest loss was also a really good like um, I guess personification of the emotions and the feelings of the team. I thought it was like a very sweet interview and answer from Quid. I don't know if you, you guys were there, right? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Um, and I just feel like they're very good at like sticking together and not really like getting too focused on blaming each other. But at the same time, we have a healthy level of like be able to openly like criticize each other. So I think there's a really good bond that we have and it, it, it feels honestly pretty special. Yeah. Any of the personalities that you think are particularly 
funny or ridiculous with oh, each yeah. other or any specific stories you can share? I mean, absolutely. I think Sniper is so funny. It's like, <laughs> Sniper is so funny to coach. Like, he's so fresh and young and, like, really, like, I mean, he's 17. Yeah. He's, like, you know, in L.A. for the first time, living on his own probably for the first time. Like, just an absolute hoot, to be honest. And, like, he does have, like, that main character energy. He thinks he's the main character, and for the most part, he, he has kind of been the main yeah. character energy. Um... He's absolutely hilarious. I, I I think you guys probably all saw, but like when he's like, yeah, Impact's been playing for like five or six years. Yes. Like just totally no idea yeah. of like the the context and the space in which he's like operating through. Yeah, and it has been funny interviewing him because yeah, sometimes he just is. Uh, it just it makes me feel so old. I don't. Does, <laughs> does he make you feel old? Cause, oh yeah, oh yeah. But also I feel kind of young because yeah. I'm with a lot of Zoomers, so I've got the lingo down. You know, dude, that is actually a thing that I've noticed in esports. Is I feel like I don't fit in in either direction because I'll be using like Twitch chat memes and Zoomer language that I pick up from yep. hanging around these pros. But then you go and hang out with the young people, and they're like, "All right, this guy is such a boomer or something." And <laughs> yeah. So you're just like, "I have no home." <laughs> uh, but Travis Gafford is homeless. Yes, guys. it's true. It's true. Uh, but no, it's been it's been cool to see the team uh, over the course of this year. You referenced that they're a develop it's a developmental roster, which is so funny because now they're going to play on the world stage. Yeah. So is that is that been strange to navigate at all? Or are you like, oh, now we're doing, you know, a little bit of extra work that we maybe had hoped we'd get to do, but maybe I assume did not expect to do. Yeah, I mean, the best way to learn is through experience, right? So yeah. going to the this world stage is going to be the best possible thing for them. So I think we're all really stoked for that. And I've already gone ahead and, like, books rooms with a bunch of other, like, some LEC teams, like PSG. We've gone ahead and, like, we're going to really grind hard when we're there and try yeah. to make the most out of it. Um, so in that, in that case, it's, like, it's kind of the best case because, once again, like, well, I do feel like we have expectations now because, like, we're in plans and we definitely really want to beat the plans teams. But overall, I would say, like, expectations aren't that high on us. People are, like happy we're here you know like yeah. that's kind of the the vibe everyone's just surprised still that we're here in not c9 yeah uh we, have you done anything or do you plan on doing anything to help the the players because i know the story that i've heard over and over again from north american players is you know maybe this is their first time at worlds or the first time at an international event they enter scrims and they're just like oh like you know yeah. they just get blasted by teams and they they don't expect to get just crushed so much because obviously the competition and the LCS is maybe not what it's like when you get into the scrim uh, schedule at Worlds. So yeah. are you how how are you planning to mitigate or manage that with the, the players? Uh, I think we we haven't really had that conversation yet with them about yeah. how hard world scrims are. I think a lot of times it is the LCK and the LPL teams that are like just crazy. Yeah. Um, and so far, like since we're there early for the plans, we don't have our scrims booked. So I'm really taking it like a day at a time, a week at a time. Like we need to go beat plans first. And I don't think there'll be any of those teams to even scrim against yeah. at the beginning. So I'm hoping that the you know our scrims against. A, I don't think LEC is like, if anything, I don't even know if they are ahead of LCS. So I I think going in like, I expect the scrims to be competitive. But if we make it to group stages, I think it's definitely going to be like. Get ready, boys. Yeah. <laughs> like, it just, I mean, I think I think we have a good team to, like, be ready to go into that kind of, like, situation. And, like, I think, I know, like, Sniper, for example, will just be really excited to play against, like, all the names that we're going against. So there's a lot of, like, excitement going into it, even if it's going to be really difficult. Yeah. He'll end up facing off against Faker and be like, this guy's been playing, like, for four years. It's been forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah actually. <laughs> uh, I think Papa Smithy and Steve were talking about how... Uh, they they were like, oh, are you, Papa, uh, I think Steve was like, oh, are you guys joining us at the training facility? And Papa Smith, he's like, no. And Steve said, oh, I think 100 Thieves is. So are you are you guys going to hang out yep. with? Uh, we're going to the Netherlands, Team the, Liquid. the TL HQ and yeah. Utrecht. Yes. I've been saying that really confidently like that. Yes. Like I know, but I, I don't know how you actually pronounce it. I think you should keep saying that. Oh, that's what I'm, that's my plan. everybody, yes. That's my plan. Especially when I get there. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that works out really well. Uh, but no, I think it's pretty cool. I, I'm trying to remember another time where uh, the LCS teams were able to like boot camp together with each other. Are you aware of any time where this happened? Um, well, in the last off season, we were all a lot of us were in the same uh, Korean building, but we yeah. weren't weren't really interacting that much. A little bit though. We had like three teams, so that was really cool. And I think it's gonna be really cool, especially because it's like a shorter Worlds boot camp. Yeah. To just like see them around, have familiar faces while you're in a foreign place. It'll be nice. Yeah. I just think it's really cool because I've heard in the past of other 
groups uh, like within the same region or other teams within the same region doing this kind of boot camp together. So it is a bummer that the FlyQuest thing didn't work out, but yeah. I think it is really neat that you guys are doing this together because I think that's uh, that's going to be helpful for everybody. Uh, all right, so yeah, I mean, generally speaking, with the team, is there anyone in particular who either surprised you this year or any kind of like call out moments? You know, I, I know you guys are headed off to Worlds, but I like to think of these interviews as a bit of a way to recap the LCS split. So anything that surprised you this year? I mean, honestly, I was really impressed with Sniper's growth. I thought with him coming in, he was going to struggle a lot more. He barely had any experience in, in Academy and in ACL, and he kind of just like, he went in and spring split and had like the most solo kills mm -hmm. of like anyone in the league in spring split. And I think his growth was a lot more accelerated than I thought it was going to be. So that was awesome to see. I think Quay was able to show like his best form in a lot of games and be able to like be his best version. Um, I guess another like honestly, ever, all of them deserve shout outs to be honest. But like I think you have to also obviously give one to Tomo for coming in late in summer and then like really fitting in well with the team and like putting himself in a tough situation and like making the most out of it. Um, feels bad not to do other ones. So I feel like Bill did a really <laughs> good job like being the like especially being the engaged support and kind of being like the the rock for the team in that sense that he wants to play like the most slow and safe game while most of everyone else on our team wants to go crazy. Yeah. So he kind of reels us back a little bit and helps us like, you know, like maybe we should go for Dragon Soul. Like maybe we shouldn't just try to end the game before that. That, yeah. that kind of thing. And I think River was just overall like the big brother, the leader of the team and I think he's done a really good job in that position especially considering I think like him as a person I think like that wasn't something that was like his strength coming in, and I think he grew a lot in that like mentor role. Yeah, I we had a caller because we had the FlyQuest coaches on uh, Hotline League last night, and we had a caller who asked a question which I really liked, which was, uh, "Are there are there any moments this split uh, that you feel particularly proud of for yourself in terms of like having like a, a call on a draft that you thought worked out really well, or like?" You know, maybe you thought a champion was overrated, and it turned out it was that way, or something along those lines. Anything that really stands out to you? Um, I would say for this split in particular, I would say like our drafts for C9. I was like really happy with them. Um, I feel like like versus FlyQuest, I thought drafts were like even to maybe even like their advantage. Mm -hmm. I don't think our read versus FlyQuest the bet was the best. Um, I guess another moment, I guess when we were going first match first flight quest, we predicted all three of their bands, even even though like we were red side and blue side kind of has like open bands. Yes. Um, yeah, but overall I'd say the drafts, and I think overall the way we dealt with like the five game losing streak as well. Because yeah. obviously we were, we were really in a hole and we needed to do something. We did something, it worked out, we like made the right call and I think we did the right, like uh, we, we had the right environment for the team to bounce back. Similarly, was there anything this split that you wish you could go back and, and change about a decision that you made or some place where you're like, okay, that was a lesson for me as a coach to learn to do differently? Yeah, I think the some things that stand out for that is that like the, the trend that I ended up noticing a little bit late was that a lot of times after we had a really good performance, we would immediately have a really awful performance. Yeah. Uh, our actually very first split of the game, we played really clean games. I think it was versus NRG. Yeah. And I was like, oh, we're going to have a good split. <laughs> we're going to have a good season. And then immediately the next week, we just had awful games. And I think same thing happened. We 3 0 dig, steamrolled them, played pretty well. Then we got steamrolled. Yeah. Destroyed C9, got destroyed by FlyQuest. Yeah. Yeah. Like it happened over and over. I noticed it at the end. And I, I, I think versus before the, the fly match, I was like, hey guys, this is our trend. Let's make sure that we like, stay locked in and we don't get like, too happy about our last dominating match. Um, but maybe if I did that like by the second time instead of the the third time, like notice the trend faster. That's one thing I would have, um, or one thing I'm like noting going into next year. Yeah. Um, and other than that, I think overall I'm pretty content with a lot of the the ways and the and the processes that this would happen. I guess there's a there's a couple like internal things that I wish I was more consistent on. There's a couple things that kind of like as the season goes like uh, routines that kind of fell off. Um, so that's definitely something I'm gonna be looking forward to like make more progress on next split. But overall I'm pretty happy with like where we landed and how our like uh, our process was. Yeah, yeah. 
Any teams that you are hoping to face if you guys can make it out of plans? Mm, I think, honestly, G2 would be yeah. really fun, like going against EU. I think that's going to be the most hype. And I, I really like playing against like LCK, LCK and LPL teams as well, just because it feels like kind of like a David versus Goliath yeah. situation. Like these guys are so good, and it's like such a fun opportunity to get to play against them. Okay. So G2 and all LCK, LPL, or anyone in particular? Honestly, all, I mean, obviously, like T1 or something would be crazy, yeah. just because, like, I've never got to compete against, like, uh, Faker as a coach or a player. Yeah. I think that'd be obviously sick. But, like, every single match versus, I feel like, the Asian teams, they're just, like, they're so good, and it's, like, you get so much dopamine if you win. Yeah. So it's like the upside is so high. Yeah. You said you you like the underdog position, and I love the underdog. Hard position. to find a more underdog <laughs> position yeah. than like LCS third seed and like you know some sick LCK or LPL team. So I get that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's my favorite. I feel like even when I was academy coach, like we were usually the underdogs going in. I think it's like the it's the most fun position to be in. Yeah. Cool. Well, is there anything that you want to say to any of the fans out there? I mean, I just want to say thank you to everyone who supported us. Uh, thank you to all our haters who were didn't think we'd be good. It's very valid. We had a developmental roster. <laughs> <laughs> we did better than we expected, and we're you know we're super stoked to represent North America, and we're gonna grind our grind our hardest and do our best. Yeah, very good. Well, thank you so much for the interview. For everyone else, you can check out the rest of my coverage of all things leading up to Worlds and Worlds itself right here on my YouTube channel. Guys? TGI fans? What are you doing in my room? Oh, I see. Travis put a he put a hidden camera in here. It says, Drew, do my outros or I will fire you. Okay. Um, well, guys, please go ahead and check out uh, the Hotline League that happened last week. We got Nuke Duck and Demonte. Some good insights into the kind of team's mindsets. Uh, go ahead and become a member today. Everything helps. You don't need to, but everything helps. And uh, check out uh, check out Travis Gafford's Instagram at Travis Gafford underscore. Have a good day, guys, uh, and please pray for me. I hope I do not get uh, fired.